For the past few years, my networking situation has been an absolute mess, but I finally made an upgrade and I finally fixed it. So initially I started off on Wi-Fi. Now, I managed to find an internal Wi-Fi card that basically just worked out of the box on Linux, which was lovely to see. Eventually it stopped working. I did have to remove it from my system, but at the time it functioned. Now, the problem though, is this was so far from the access point that it was so slow and had such a terrible ping that it just didn't make any sense to keep using. Now, you might be saying, Brody, why don't you just get another access point and place it closer to your system? Now, I don't know how it works in other countries, but in Australia, when a house has fiber, which that house did, this was done through a system known as the National Broadband Network or the NBN. This fiber is going to be run up to a thing called the connection box, and then your modem, your modem router combo thingy is going to be plugged into that device. Now, in a sensible house, this connection box would be placed in your living room, in your kitchen, somewhere that you can easily access and easily run devices to. In this house, it was in the garage. And considering that it was a metal box with brick in the way, it made sense why the connection was bad. So what I did at the time is I went and bought these right here. These are a pair of TP-Link AV600s. These are what are known as Powerline Ethernet adapters, and I think locally priced at the time, they were like 60 or $70. These are basically magical little devices, and at least with my set, they're also interchangeable, so basically you can sit on either side of the network. Both of these have an Ethernet port on the bottom. So pretty much the way they work is one of these is going to plug into a power socket near your router, which is commonly going to be a modem router combination. Then you're going to run an Ethernet cable into that router. Then near the device you want to give internet, let's say your console, your PC, anything like that, the other side is going to plug into a power socket and you're going to run a cable from that into the device. And these also have a pairing button on them, which you might need to press and then basically they pair together and then use the power lines as if they're an ethernet cable as a way to transfer the connection along. Now using power lines to transfer data is a great idea, but they have some pretty extreme limitations. One of those being it requires both the sockets to be on the same circuit in the house. If they're not on the same circuit, there's no way to get the data across. Now this is gonna be fairly common for Australian houses when you're using one of the sort of standard power sockets. You're not using the one expected for the fridge. You're not using something on one of the additions to the house. Let's say you have power running to an outdoor shed or something like that. Those things would commonly be on a separate circuit. If I'm just going from bedroom to bedroom, typically that's going to work fine. These specific models also only have a single port a single port for about $70, which if you consider just running an ethernet cable is maybe double or triple the price. And that's for like a 25 meter plus cable. Now there are multi-port versions that do exist, but the multi-port versions tend to get very expensive very quickly. And the most that I've seen is about three ports for around 130 or so dollars, which is still isn't a great deal. And the same is true for higher speeds. Let's say you have a NAS in your network. These are capped at 600 megabit, which, you know, isn't horribly slow, but if you just get a standard switch, it's gonna be a gigabit, which a gigabit's obviously faster than 600 megabit. You can get gigabit versions of these, but once again, prices go up. But even considering that, the speed is going to be entirely dependent on the quality of the copper in your house. So if you're living in a relatively modern house, something built in like the last, you know, 10 or so years, it's probably gonna be fine. But if you wanted to run these in your grandma's house and she'd be living in that house for the past 100 years, well, you might have a bit more of a problem getting anywhere near close to that speed. 
they're also very not suitable for apartments. Now, the purpose of the pairing buttons is to make sure that these two devices are paired together and not being interfered with by other devices that may exist on the same circuits. But it may not always work. And if someone has the exact same version as you, they may be intercepting some of your signal. You'll start dropping packets and it's going to start interfering with theirs as well. And it would just be kind of a mess. The same is true if you want to run multiple of these in the exact same house. You're probably going to start seeing some packet loss here and there. But with this new place I'm living in where I have a lot more freedom, I can run cables, I can do stuff like that, I wanted to get rid of that solution and do something a little bit better. So what I did is I bought myself a Gigabit Switch. This is a Netgear GS105. It is a five port switch. It cost me $50, I want to say. And this thing is absolutely fantastic. So this is part of Netgear's unmanaged switch line. So there's managed switches and unmanaged switches. An unmanaged switch is effectively equivalent to a USB hub, but for Ethernet. It's a device that just adds more ports onto your network and the router just treats it as if there are now more ports. It is as plug and play as it can possibly get. I plug it into my network and it just starts working. Nothing else I need to do. Whereas a managed switch is much more like a router where it has settings that you can control. So managed switches also tend to be more expensive because there's, you know, more going on. But these let you do things like control the maximum speed of each port, let you disable ports and things like that. But for my use case and for most general home users, an unmanaged switch is all you're going to need. Do keep in mind though that if you want to run a network switch, you always need to minus off at least one port. So in the case of a five port switch, I have four usable ports. In the case of an eight port switch, I have seven usable ports, so on and so forth. This is basically so you have some way to actually plug it into your router. I did have a slight problem though that these guys didn't have. That's the fact that there is a hallway in the way. Luckily, there is a very, very simple solution. Ethernet supports fairly long cables. So, how about we use a 25 meter cable, which is a little bit more than I need, but certainly does the job. So the setup is simple enough. I plug one side of the cable into my router, which as I mentioned earlier, is a combo unit. And then we run it along the entire hallway. Now, painting is currently being done in this hallway. So for now, it's going to sit on the floor and basically be a tripping hazard. But at some point, I do want to go and run it along the skirting board on the ceiling and then just have it drop down when it gets to the room. And that seems like a much more sensible solution. Now, I can predict exactly what one of you guys is going to say. Brody, why don't you get the house networked? That is a much cleaner solution. You know, cables running everywhere and it's just a better idea. And you know what? You're completely right. It is. It's a much better idea than what I'm doing. It's also expensive and I don't want to do it. So I'm not going to. And one day when I own my own place, I will get it done. But while I'm living with one of my mates, I'm just going to do this temporary solution. Anyway... The other side of the cable will then plug into the switch. It doesn't matter which port it plugs into. I typically like to use port 1 though, just so I know which port I shouldn't be unplugging. And then from there, basically just run Ethernet cables to all the other devices which need to be networked, which in my case is my PC and also my PS4. But that leaves me with two ports open, which is perfectly fine because it gives me some room for expansion without having, you know, like four or five unused ports if I bought a bigger switch like an eight port. Maybe at some point I want to have a free port for testing some devices like a Raspberry Pi to test out some ARM stuff. Maybe I want to buy another game console and get myself something like a Nintendo Switch. Maybe I want to go and build a capture or streaming PC which would probably also operate as a NAS and have that on my network as well. Or maybe for now, they're not going to be used for anything. Now, at some point in the future, if I decide the 5 port wasn't enough, I actually needed an 8 port, this isn't just going to go into the bin. What I'll probably do is slap it out into the living room near the consoles out there and basically just have those be wired. 
aside from the internet in this house just generally being flaky, this has been an absolutely great upgrade and a great solution to my problem. And I would highly recommend it to anyone with the same issue if, you know, you can reasonably run a cable. If not, hey, these are perfectly fine. They don't really need to be, but I might as well make use of it if I can. So let me know in the comment section down below, have you ever needed some crazy networking solution where you have like a networking cabinet with all the devices you need, or did you just want something that you knew was basically going to work? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to something, Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech of a T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.